What is going on guys? Welcome to the video. Happy Monday. Uh, today's video is actually going to be a guest feature on the channel. Um, this is something that I want to do from time to time with different creators that I am um, following that I'm aware of. So today's video is going to be done by a friend of mine named Richard Coffin. Um, he operates under the YouTube channel A Plain Bagel. If you guys aren't familiar with this channel, I will link it in the description for you guys below. He puts out a lot of great content. He really does know his stuff when it comes to investing. I'm a big fan of his page. His most recent video done on marijuana stocks I thought was very very, very well done. Uh, him and I share a very similar view uh, in terms of this field, uh, talking about risks and kind of what you need to look out for. So I would definitely recommend uh, going to check out that video. Uh, but the video today is going to be on interest rates, just a good video on how interest rates impact the economy, how they impact your investments. Uh, great video for beginners. So I won't waste any more of your guys time. I'll get to the video. Again, I'll put his channel in the description below. I hope you guys enjoy. See you next week probably heard in the news that the Federal Reserve and the Bank of Canada are increasing interest rates. Sounds like a pretty important headline, but what does it mean? Well, interest rates are a very important part of economics, and they influence both the performance of our stocks and our personal spending. How? We'll dive into the topic and more on today's Plain Bagel. Central banks, such as the Federal Reserve in the US and the Bank of Canada in Canada, are entities with the mandate of stabilizing economic activity and promoting prosperity. One of the ways they do this is by controlling the rates at which banks can borrow money from other large banks in the overnight market. These loans help banks access cash, which they can use to further loan out money to other institutions and consumers, like us, at higher rates. This loan system essentially helps get money moving in an economy. As banks profit from their loans to companies, businesses gain access to capital needed to carry out profit-generating initiatives, and consumers can borrow money to buy homes and other expensive items. The rate that the commercial banks charge one another on these overnight loans is based on what's called the federal funds rate, or the policy rate in Canada, which are set by the respective central banks. And when you hear about rising rates, these are typically the numbers journalists are referencing. You see, these rates have far-reaching impacts on business activity because they essentially underline all other loans in the country. As they go up, so too do interest rates for mortgages, lines of credit, and even company bonds. So they are important metrics to watch when gauging our economy. After the 2008 financial crisis, for example, the central banks lowered their policy rates to help the economy through the turbulence, and we have had low rates since then. This means that since 2008, Banks have been paying low rates on their loans, which allowed them to also loan out money at cheaper rates to businesses and consumers. This means that companies have had lowered costs for some time, allowing them to hire more people. This higher employment means that consumers have had more money, which translated into higher spending for the last decade. So a win-win all around. But as we've mentioned, central banks have started to increase the cost of their loans meaning that companies and consumers will soon need to pay more money for their debt. This will make it more difficult for firms to pursue new ventures and hire more people, so employment, and likewise consumer wealth, could take a hit as companies cut back on spending. Seems like a pretty bad move, so why would central banks do this when things are looking up? Well, unfortunately, in economics, things being too good can be a problem. One way to think about it is to imagine a car engine that is built to run at a maximum of 100 miles per hour. It is possible to push the engine further, but doing so would cause the unit to overheat, which could lead to some damage if the engine doesn't cool down and reduce its speed. The economy works in a similar way. There's a sustainable level of activity that the country can operate at, and when things move faster than expected, the system overheats and causes some issues so the central bank looks to slow down activity when it's growing too rapidly. Here's a more detailed breakdown. When economic activity is high, we often see an increase in consumer demand for goods and services, since more people are employed and have more money to spend. If this demand grows too quickly, then companies will begin increasing their prices higher and higher, leading to inflation. Inflation is when the value of cash falls. Because prices are increasing, your money loses its ability to buy as many goods and services, meaning that your wealth diminishes over time. Now, we experience low levels of inflation every year. In fact, the central banks target a rate around 2% every year to avoid a shrinking economy. But the further past this target that inflation rises, the more consumers' wealth will diminish. 
which can cause a crisis if left unchecked. So, when things start to overheat, central banks will increase their policy rates and make it more expensive to borrow money, which will decrease demand and keep inflation at bay. While it certainly leads to short-term costs, including unemployment, it essentially ensures we don't experience dangerously high inflation like we've seen in some other countries. So, because our economy has improved quite a bit from the 2008 financial crisis, and since employment at levels are high, the central banks have deemed that our economy is due for a policy rate increase. While we've already seen a few rate hikes over 2017, more are expected in the near future. How will this affect us personally? Well, as with most things in economics, these policies have trickling effects on us as both consumers and investors. As mentioned, consumer loans like mortgages will become more expensive. And while current fixed rate loans will stay the same, any consumer with a variable rate loan will begin to see their payments increase. This is a particular concern for Canada, where we have some of the highest mortgage levels per capita. Investments may also take a hit from this change. This is because as interest rates rise, the stock market tends to experience weaker performance. Why? Well, as we've mentioned, higher interest rates make it more expensive for companies to operate, which will lower the expected profitability of the firm and in turn hurt the value of its stock. Bond prices are also likely to fall. Because newer bonds will pay investors higher interest rates, older bonds with lower coupon payments will become less valuable. After all, why buy a 4% bond when you can buy a 6% bond from the same company? But despite this, not all is bad for the investor. As we've mentioned, new bond issues will begin to pay higher rates. So as you buy new bonds in your investment portfolio, you should see higher yield returns. Savings accounts should start offering higher interest rates as well. And while stocks may be impacted short term, long term, they will adjust. So be aware that we may experience volatility with our investments in the short term, but if you keep a level head, then you should get through the turbulence no problem. When it comes to debt, keep your levels manageable. If you're looking to buy a house, budget for rate increases and look into saving more before making a down payment. Times like these can be scary, but so long as we play it safe and stick to our investment strategies, we should come out the other side unscathed. And with that said, we're out of time. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you like what we're doing here, please subscribe. Hit the little bell icon to make sure you get notifications about future videos. If you have any feedback or topics you'd like us to cover in future videos, leave a comment down below. For The Plain Bagel, my name is Richard Coppin. Thanks for joining me today.